Welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike. This is Casey. I was hoping she was going to sidekick with me today, but uh, yeah, I don't think she wants to stick around. So uh, anyway, it's a, a beautiful day here today in Halifax, so I thought I would um, shoot my intro at least on, on the deck before I go down to my, to my basement to talk about toys like a troll. So um, yeah, in today's episode, I'm going to talk about one of the G.I. Joe Collectors Club's convention sets. Um, I've done a, at least one video in the past where I reviewed all of the exclusive figures that the Collectors Club made available at one of their, their Joe Cons. Uh, I've also done reviews of all of the uh, Collectors Club figure subscription service figures. So in this episode, I'm gonna take a look at the 2014 set, which was called uh, Zombie Initiative. And uh, that was at the G.I. Joe convention that was held in, uh, in Texas that year. I did not attend. I have never been to a Joe Con myself. Um, it's not really financially... It doesn't make financial sense where I'm in Canada. It would be a very expensive trip to venture down um, to one of these conventions for a weekend. So I always just bought the, the non-attendee um, box set. So... I have the entire box set from, from 2014, which I'll show you in a moment. But uh, the conventions, they always have some exclusive figures which are just available at the con and which aren't available for purchase uh, for non-attendees. So somebody like myself would be forced to buy those kind of figures on, on eBay. Now, uh, in my last video, I showed you some of the, the other figures that I did buy. But uh, in 2014, I didn't buy any of the any of the other exclusive figures. I'll, I'll talk about them a little bit, but I don't have any to show you. So um, the 2014 set, Zombie Initiative, uh, focused on Ecoforce, which was a G.I. Joe sub-team, uh, first introduced in 1991. And around the 90s, G.I. Joe, I would say, kind of was losing its way a little bit. There was uh, competition from new toy lines springing up, and so G.I. Joe was kind of trying new things to see what would stick. Uh, Ninja Force is a good example, which I would say was probably a direct reaction to the popularity of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at the time. Um, Eco Force in uh, 91 was kind of G.I. Joe's environmentally themed hog in the spotlight here. Um, so yeah, Eco Force was G.I. Joe's environmentally conscious sub-team. And you can see there was other toy lines, other brands springing up around the time uh, with a similar theme, like Captain Planet and the Planeteers that launched in uh, 1990. Uh, so did Toxic Crusader, which also battled environmental issues. Here, Casey, I'll put you down. Here. So yeah, so G this was G.I. Joe's response to that. Uh, it didn't last very long and there weren't very, very many uh, figures involved. Um, it, there was a wave one was in 1991. And then there were some more figures, just a couple added on in 1992. So uh, I had stopped collecting G.I. Joe's uh, by that point. I would stopped right around 1990. So anything after that um, was kind of new to me, although my little brother Brian was collecting G.I. Joe's by then. So uh, he had some of these figures. And uh, they were mostly new characters. Um, the G.I. Joe uh, team in 1991 for EcoForce was... Uh, clean Sweep and Ozone, and they were both brand new characters. But then there was also Flint, and Flint was a well-established character uh, from before. Um, and then for Cobras, there was the uh, kind of a new, uh, the leader of the evil uh, side of things, the evil eco-force, I guess, which was Cesspool, and he was like a, a CEO of a corporation that uh, was polluting the environment. So yeah, there was Cesspool, uh, and then two troopers, a Sludge Viper, and a new version of the Toxo Viper. And then in 1992, the figures they added were new versions of established characters Barbecue and Deep Six. And then there was a Toxo Zombie, which was the Toxo Viper from the previous wave, except infected with, uh, you know, pollutants, and you become this Toxo Zombie. And one of the neat things about all the EcoForce figures is they featured color change plastic. So they all had these uh, big weapons where you would fill with water and they would spray. And when the figures uh, got wet, the plastic would change color, which was supposed to represent battle damage. So uh, none of those EcoForce figures had really been tackled by Hasbro in the modern era of G.I. Joe's. So uh, yeah, it was left to the Collector's Club to do that. 
and we hadn't seen any of them until 2014. Uh, first up we got Cesspool, and he was included in the second figure subscription service. And then there was the convention set, which pretty much filled in all the other gaps. So that's we got Clean Sweep, Ozone, Eco Forest Flint, um, we got the Toxo Viper version 2, and we got the Toxo Zombie. Um, now we didn't get a, a Sludge Viper exactly, but we got kind of an homage to the Sludge Viper, which I'll show you once I start going through the figures. And we never did get the 1992 Joe assortment, so we never did get an updated Barbecue or Deep Six, which is, which is too bad, I guess. So yeah, without further ado, let's uh, jump into the, the review of the convention set, and I'll see you again outside at the end of the video. So first up here is the box for the Zombie Initiative set. You'll see there, 15 figure collection set. That's uh, the same as every other set we've gotten there. Just a kind of black textured back, graphic on the front, and the graphic there is pretty, uh, pretty alarming. Sometimes it's just text on the front, but this one here we've got a zombie bursting right through. Looks like a barricaded doorway. And uh, yes, yeah, so let's just take the lid off right quick. And inside the box there you see the, the foam insert where all 15 figures were stored as well as the uh, the pin that says Dallas, Texas. And inside the box underneath the foam there you'll find the certificate of authenticity which each one of these box sets comes with. Um, and that's also where you found all the file cards and all the weapons and accessories uh, as well as the comic book that is always exclusive to these sets and gives you a little story featuring the characters uh, contained in the box set. Now I've got, most of that stuff is stored elsewhere, so all I've got is my certificate left in the bottom of the box there. But uh, yeah, so that's the box, let's move on to the toys. So first off, we're gonna take a look at the G.I. Joes in the set. So this here is Clean Sweep, and this is Clean Sweep version two. The only other version of Clean Sweep we've ever gotten is the 1991 original, which this one is based on. And yeah, I think this figure turned out pretty great. Um, his body is pretty much uh, mostly reused parts from Airborne, but the mask there is brand new. And they really could have gotten away, I think, with putting any head underneath that mask. Most people are gonna display him with the mask on. And uh, like nobody's really, I don't think too many people are playing with these toys. These are very expensive uh, collector's items. So it's really just for the most hardcore collectors. So most of them are just standing in displays or maybe even staying in their box. But the club actually did spend the money to give him a brand new head sculpt. So I'll try and pop this off here. So there you go. Brand new head sculpt for Clean Sweep. And it's, uh, it's pretty accurate to the vintage figure. At least, you know, he had a mustache. So they got that right. And yeah, he looks pretty good. Uh, I like this Clean Sweep figure a lot. Uh, he's he's tall. He seems kind of unique amongst G.I. Joe's. He stands out pretty good on my shelf. The colors really pop. The accessories that he came with, pretty good. He's got this, this gun with that kind of weird attachment, which looks like it might spray some sort of chemical. And in his briefcase here, we've got eh, just a gun. I couldn't remember. I didn't know if he had some sort of chemical weapon or something in there, but... Nope, just a gun and a computer in this case. There you go. So it's clean sweep. So next up we've got Ozone. And this here is Ozone version 5. And it is based on the original 1991 figure. So Ozone, like clean sweep, was introduced in 91 as part of the Eco Force. Now, while clean sweep never did have another version until this set, um, they reused Ozone a few times as like an astronaut. So he was repainted a bunch more times in the next couple of years after his release. So I think he came out in like 92, 93, maybe again 94. So that's how we get up to version 5 here. So yeah, this is a, another great figure. Like there's a lot going on, lots of details. Looks really cool. The colors, very dynamic. I just love the way this looks. The whole body and the harness and everything, that's all made up of, uh, of reused parts. Um, but he's got this brand new helmet, 
modeled after the uh, the 1991 helmet. And like with Clean Sweep, they gave him a brand new head under there, complete with his beard, which again is really appreciated. I wish every Joe had a unique head sculpt, but uh, when guys are kind of associated with wearing their helmets, you'd expect them to be displayed this way. Those are the kind of figures I think you could cut some corners and give them just a generic head. They could have given him rock and roll or breaker's head since they both have beards, but they didn't. They gave him a unique head and I think that's awesome. So yeah, this here is Ozone and he's great. Next up, we've got Flint. Now this is based on the 1991 EcoForce Flint, and that was version three of Flint at the time. But this here is actually version 22 because uh, Flint is a very popular character and he got all kinds of various versions uh, between the 90s up until this figure here. So again, very nice looking figures. They're very nice looking figure and the colors are pretty accurate to the vintage figure. Now you'll notice here the helmet uh, in the vintage line, he had a unique helmet, different from Ozone's, but this one here, the club has decided to use that helmet for both of them, which I think is fine. Uh, and underneath there, he has uh, the head that was originally used on Flint from the Retaliation movie. So that head was one of the first Flint heads that had a removable beret. So, uh, it works out well that it's still Flint's head under here, but if he had his beret, which is sometimes sculpted on him, it never would have fit under the helmet. So yeah, he looks pretty great. I love the weapons that he's came with here as well. And I will just quickly mention about the weapons. I'll show you some of the ones that they're, uh, that they've got in their hands here. I didn't even mention Ozone's. He's got uh, kind of a cool spray weapon here with a hose. Um, this is the backpack that was all featured with uh, Airtight, I believe. But these aren't necessarily all the weapons that came in the convention set. I might not have them all in their hands. Um, I find most of these sets usually have some extra extra weapons that I don't have room for, and they just end up in my parts bin. So yeah, don't uh, don't think that necessarily I'm showing you everything that was in the set. Now here's EcoForce Flint next to his vintage 1991 counterpart. I don't have any of this Flint's gear, unfortunately. I don't have the helmet, because this is something that I picked up uh, secondhand uh, probably just within the last few years. So uh, yeah, he's one of the few vintage comparisons I can show you for this video. But uh, yeah, you can see they got it pretty close. The colors aren't quite as bright and garish. Um, but yeah, it's a it's definitely a nice homage to that figure. And if you were a big fan of this vintage figure, I think you'd be pretty satisfied with this modern update. So next up is one of two kind of... Uh, or maybe three, I suppose, kind of odd choices that they put into this EcoForce set. This is, I've never quite know how to pronounce his name. I think it's Shebang, but I could be wrong on that. Anyway, Shebang was a member of uh, G.I. Joe's Ninja Force sub team, which also came out in the 90s. And yeah, he was in no way associated with EcoForce. Um, but the club had made some of the other Ninja Force members in their figure subscription services. And I think they were just looking for um, somewhere to stick this guy. So they managed on the file card, I think, to kind of fit him into the storyline somewhere, saying that, like, when zombies get too close and you run out of ammo, you know, you want a guy like Shebang around because he's a master of bladed weapons. So, you know, it kind of works for the storyline. But you kind of think, well, why didn't they try and make EcoForce Barbecue or EcoForce uh, Deep Six rather than give us this kind of random guy? Um, so anyway, that aside, I think this is a great looking figure. Um, it's all reused parts except for the head, and that's the most important part. This is a brand new head sculpt, uh, and yeah, it looks awesome. I love the kind of the bandana kind of blowing in the wind off to the side there. It works really well with these parts. He's well proportioned. Again, the colors are very bright, very dynamic. He's got some great weapons with him there. And yeah, so I'm very happy to add Shebang to my uh, collection, even if he did seem like a little bit of an odd choice for this particular set. Now here's the next G.I. Joe, which I find to be a little odd. So this is Outback. Um, this is version eight of the G.I. Joe survival training instructor. And uh, yeah, this look kind of works 
for like a zombie apocalypse. He looks like he's kind of bundled up. He's kind of grabbed everything. Uh, he's got his hatchet, his little radio, some darts on his wrist there. Uh, yeah, he looks kind of dirty. Um, yeah, and it kind, it kind of works. Gas can there. It looks like the kind of character, like uh, you can see Morgan wearing this in The Walking Dead or something. So it makes sense in that regard. But at the same time, where this set was mostly focused on Ecoforce, it seemed kind of weird to throw Outback in here um, when they could have put in different Ecoforce characters. Plus, um, the club was trying to get us new versions of vintage characters that we didn't have yet. So that kind of makes sense why they managed to squeeze in Shebang, because that was only Shebang version 2. Only, the only other version of Shebang ever made since the 1992 original Ninja Force figure. But with Outback, this is version 8. We already have multiple versions of him in the modern era. Um, here's one of them there so that's that's kind of what we're used to Outback looking like and this this look here um, there's no uh, what's the word I'm looking for there this is this look has never been established before Outback has never looked like this in the vintage line or anything like that um, and the head and all that stuff here it's actually borrowed from this snow job figure which came out um, a little while beforehand and you'll see he's got the same pack um, with some different attachments with the gas can still there he's got his skis and so yeah I already associate this look that head with snow job rather than outback so when I look at this figure I kind of automatically think snow job so yeah, it's it's not at all a bad figure. In fact, I think it's actually a really cool figure. Uh, I love all the gear that he's got there. But uh, again, just kind of an odd choice to put into this particular set. And the last G.I. Joe member to be included in the 2014 set is the Steel Brigade Commander. And he's the Security Force Leader. And this is version 2 of Steel, Steel Brigade Commander. Now... This doesn't actually, this figure here, this color scheme is not based on Steel Brigade Commander version 1. Version 1 was a 2005 figure that was made by the club and he was wearing more like a gray camo. But what this figure is based off of is the, the 1992 mail away figure of Steel Brigade. Uh, not necessarily Commander, but Steel Brigade, the original one, was released uh, in this color scheme. So this isn't the vintage one, but this is... Uh, the remake of the vintage Steel Brigade. So when Steel Brigade was first offered, these were the colors you could get them in in the 80s. And this was a mail away you would send away and they would send you this figure with your own name and on the file card and you could choose what weapons he came with and what his military specialty was and all that stuff. Anyway, they brought the campaign back in the 90s, but they repainted the figure to look like this. And uh, yeah, so probably for a lot of fans, this was their version of Steel Brigade. I never had this one as a kid. I had this one. So it's kind of cool that they gave us this version here. And if they had just called him Steel Brigade, it probably would have annoyed some people because people really don't like when they put what they would consider troop builders in these very expensive box sets because people want to build whole squads of them. So if somebody wanted three of these guys, they'd have to buy three box sets and that would be extremely expensive. So the club went ahead and called him the Commander which is kind of a way of throwing collectors a bone, I think, because then you look at this guy more as a standalone character and you don't necessarily feel compelled to go out and buy three or four of them here. So it's a cool figure. It's got that kind of like beachhead face underneath. The helmet works well. And yeah, it's a nice figure. The only thing is I, like, I don't particularly like that color scheme for the Steel Brigade. I think this one looks much better, it's much cooler. So, yeah, if you were a fan of the 1992 Steel Brigade, then you're probably happy to get this guy. Uh, I'm happy to get him, too, just because it's something different. But comparatively, uh, yeah, I think this guy's much better. So let's move on to the Cobra side of things. So this is a Cobra Lab Rat. And this is version 1 of Lab Rat. We have never seen this character before. And, uh, yeah, you get two of them in the convention set, as I just mentioned uh, fans, when you have a, a trooper like this, or kind of a generic character like that they would want to maybe have a squad of, the club is always pretty good about putting multiples in these box sets. So at least with these ones, 
Usually they give us teams of three, but with this one here, team of two, I think is sufficient as they're really just kind of like lab technicians. They're not really troopers that you have in the field. So yeah, there they are. I think they look pretty great. It's it's kind of a weird costume because underneath they're wearing, they're basically made up of a Cobra Commander's body. And you can kind of tell that it almost looks like Cobra Commander under there. And then they stuck a lab coat over top of them. And then this head here, um, like it, it works for a lab technician who's working with dangerous chemicals. Um, but it's actually originally a dusty head. Um, an alternate head that came with Pursuit of Cobra Dusty um, for, I guess, to deal with sandstorms and whatnot. But I bet a lot of fans probably don't display Dusty with this head. They probably display him with the, the more standard, you know, more standard head where you can see his whole face. And I didn't even have that Pursuit of Cobra Dusty. So when I got these figures, this head was brand new to me. So yeah, I don't associate it with Dusty at all, really. It definitely looks like a Cobra Lab Rat. And I think these guys are pretty great. Now for weapons, they've got this kind of... Uh, this little gun here, which the way they painted it looks like they kind of inject something, that purple chemical, which is Compound Z. That's kind of what the whole accompanying, uh, the comic book that came with the set was all about, was Compound Z is what Cobra was using to infect people. And inside of these briefcases that they each come with, they each come with a couple of canisters of Compound Z there. So you'll see I've got him holding one in his hand. It's kind of marked as a biohazard. And yeah, these guys are pretty cool. So next up in the convention set is the Toxo Viper. Now these here aren't the figures from the set. What these here are, are the original Toxo Viper figure from 1988, which I had when I was a kid. And one of these guys is my childhood figure. So you'll see here, they had this, this face underneath here with kind of the, you know, gas mask or something to help the breathing. And over top of that, they had this big, crazy removable helmet, which I always, felt looked kind of like a duck or something just the way they painted the front of it orange and it fit on there really snug and yeah i really liked these figures and they came with uh this backpack here with some canisters and then a hose with kind of a chemical weapons gun and i really liked these these toxo vipers then uh a second version of the toxo viper came out in 1991 as part of the eco force which i did not get so when they were going to put toxo vipers in this box set, I was really hoping we'd get updated versions of this guy. This is the one I had as a kid. It's the version one. This is the version most people probably wanted, but instead they went with the 1991 version, which makes sense because they were more related to EcoForce. But sadly, this is one of the characters that we never got an update of in the modern era. So, warrant warrant. So here are the Toxo Vipers that we get in the box set. So this is Toxo Viper version three, based on the 1991 version 2. Now, as bummed as I was about not getting a remake of the version 1 Toxo Viper, it made it a lot uh, easier to accept once I saw how awesome these figures were. I absolutely love these figures. Uh, I named the Toxo Viper on my uh, top 10 list in, in, uh, in 2014, the years these came out, because I, I just absolutely love this figure. I think he looks fantastic and i'm really stoked that i got three of them because it does make for a nice little squad each one of them came with these big giant uh rocket launcher guns which kind of uh was reminiscent of the big water spraying guns that the original one came with um then they also came with these little pistols here backpack with the biohazard tank on them the colors are just the they're really they really pop on the shelf i i just love it so much and uh these helmets, these are brand new pieces that were made for the for the set. Underneath, they've got just kind of standard mast heads here. This head was actually originally seen on Flash, the G.I. Joe Laser Trooper from the, uh, the Rise of Cobra movie. So yeah, you've got Flash head underneath, and then you've got these, these new helmets over top. Whoops. Anyway, I just, I just think it's great. It's, uh, I think, way better than even the, uh, the the vintage figure that it's based on. The vintage figure didn't have the these little spikes kind of come off as much as they do here. And yeah, I just love them. So there you go. There's Toxo Viper version 3. So next up in the set, we have three Toxo Zombies. So this is Toxo Zombie version 2. It is based on the 1992 original Toxo Zombie. Now, the 92 Toxo Zombie, it was 
the same idea. So they took the, the 1991 Toxo Viper and then they kind of roughed him up. They kind of tore his helmet. They showed he had his grody hand and exposed foot were popping out of his costume. Except he wasn't as as straight a repaint as this one was. The Toxo Zombie, instead of having purple, his suit was all pink. And I don't know, I guess you could have said that discoloration came from the chemical, whatever chemical got on this guy, the compound Z, to turn him into the zombie. Um, but I really like that they didn't go with the pink and everything here. Like, I like that they kept it so similar um, just for consistency. So you can see these guys are made up of largely the same parts. Like, his leg there is right on. This hand, this arm here is exact. The chest is exact. It's really just the head. And so where this guy, you know, you know this helmet comes off and he's got that mast head underneath. This guy here, the whole helmet is one sculpted piece. Like, you can't take it off of that zombie head. And uh, yeah, I just, I think it's great how closely they matched this head to this removable helmet. And yeah, it just looks awesome. I love it. And so with the exposed parts here, you'll see the skin is kind of gray with blue veins coursing through it. You'll see it on the foot, on the hand, and on the head. And what I like about that, that's also a little different from how the vintage Toxo Zombie looked. But what it does match up nice with is this figure which is the zombie viper that Hasbro had released a couple of years prior. So you can see this guy. And take a look at his helmet here, because we're going to come back to this in a moment. But underneath this, this guy's helmet, er, he's got that gray skin with kind of blue veins and blue ooze coming out of it. So Hasbro did this figure long before you know there was any plans for this set, probably. But uh, I like the consistency of this zombie tying in with these other zombies here so yeah really cool figures i like them a lot uh, i believe they all came with these handheld missiles and i i could be wrong with this but i seem to recall on the file cards they described that once these guys these vipers had basically turned into these mindless zombies they would just send them marching into like joe headquarters holding missiles to blow themselves up and stuff so that's kind of a neat little uh, little detail too. And that's really the only accessory these guys came with. My one gripe about these figures is uh, this arm here, the lower arm, which is used from the, uh, the same arm that the zombie viper used here. Uh, see there with the kind of torn sleeve. I find it falls off a lot. If I, if I try and turn this, yeah, the arms just pop off really easily. So uh, yeah, it's not so bad for display because they don't just, they don't fall off just from standing but yeah if I were to want to play with these guys or when I'm trying to display them for photographs or something I find their arms fall off a lot but anyway talks to zombies pretty cool and here's the last figure from the convention set so this here is repulsor version one we've never seen this character before um, but you'll see there the helmet that is the same helmet that the zombie viper uh, wore but it's kind of been recolored and repurposed here. And this whole uh, this whole figure is made up of uh, reused parts. There's nothing new here. Um, but what they've created here is something that looks a lot like the Sludge Viper. This is clearly an homage to the 1991 Sludge Viper. And kind of like what I guess they did with the Steel Brigade Commander is I'm guessing that maybe the club wanted to do a new version of the Sludge Viper and that this is the, the parts they came up with. And they could have very easily, you know, made three of these guys and said, there you go. There's the new Sledge Viper. But when they realized that they didn't have room in their set to give us more than one of this guy, because they were already giving us multiple, you know, Toxo Vipers, Toxo Zombies, and Lab Rats. Once they were only giving us one, they decided to make this a unique, unique character. So this guy's kind of like the, uh, the leader of the Sledge Vipers. They call him the security director for Cobra. But his file card did make mention that he wears the last remnants of the Sludge Viper battle suits. So yeah, if you were a Sludge Viper fan and you're disappointed we didn't get a modern era Sludge Viper, this guy should definitely fit the bill. And uh, underneath, I find he kind of looks like uh, Negan from The Walking Dead. But uh, this is actually a uh, Red Star head that they've just repainted with black hair. But yeah, it's always cool to get unique uh, Cobra Trooper or unique Cobra soldiers added to your army that aren't just troopers. 
So yeah, there's your Pulsar. And besides the accessories you see there, the gun and the, the barbecue backpack there, um, he had another really cool accessory here. And that is his dog, who is just named Dog. D-A-W-G. And you can see here with Dog, he looks like he's half dead. This is like a zombie dog. And I think it's basically, whoops, this was Repulsor's dog that he loved. And when it died, he used Compound Z to resurrect it. So yeah, it looks like his eyeballs like hanging out there. You can see his exposed ribs. Lots of that blue pus coming out of him. Like this is probably the best pet we've ever gotten with a G.I. Joe figure. He just looks great. So yeah, there is Repulsor and Dog. And now I just want to quickly touch on the other exclusives that were available at the 2014 convention, um, which I did not get. So this here is the Dro the, uh, the G.I. Joe Paratrooper Crazy Legs. And every year at the convention, the Joe Club does a parachute drop figure where they take a figure, they put them on an actual parachute, and they throw them off the roof of a building. And then the kids just storm the field and try and grab these things. So in 2014, it was this figure, uh, Crazy Legs, and he was in his Night Force uh, costume, which is pretty much all black. So I didn't bother to get that figure because it's pretty expensive on the secondary market. I didn't have Night Force uh, Crazy Legs when I was a kid, so I don't have a strong attachment to the character. And I really prefer his standard colors here. But yeah, that was one of the figures that was available at the Texas convention. When you became a member of the G.I. Joe Club every year, you had to pay like 75 bucks to join each year, and they would send you the monthly newsletter as well as give you access to their club store and stuff. But you'd always get a free membership figure every year. And 2014's free figure was Cross Country. So this itself wasn't necessarily a convention figure. You got this when you signed up with the membership. But what they did have at the convention for the first time was this figure on a blister card with unique uh, artwork and stuff. Because this figure that I got through just my membership just came in a bag. So yeah, if you're a carded collector, being able to get cross country on a card uh, would have been a big deal. And I will just mention, just since I'm talking about cross country here, what an awesome figure this was. Here's the uh, the vintage cross country, which I was a fan of. I, I don't really know why. There wasn't too many G.I. Joes I wasn't a fan of, but like this guy here, he's kind of pudgy looking in the face. His uh, kind of Civil War reenactor outfit, it's kind of silly. But he came with the Havoc, which is one of the best uh, G.I. Joe vehicles ever. So that maybe warmed warmed me up to him a little bit. Anyway, this uh, redo of uh, Cross Country, I think is just fantastic. It gives him a lot more personality. He's not so chubby looking. Uh, the costume is just a lot more interesting. There's a lot more details on it. And uh, yeah, this figure... I would imagine it's probably a little expensive now to try and buy on the secondary market, but I highly recommend you track it down if you don't have it already, because I really think it's one of the club's best figures. Another figure they had at the 2014 con was G.I. Joe, the original G.I. Joe, Joe Colton, which is supposed to be the, uh, the original guy that was the 12 inch doll. So this isn't the figure. This is one of the uh, adventure team figures that the, club had put out a couple years ago um, which were supposed to be you know the vintage 12 inch doll that's why they have that head that really is reminiscent of the the 12 inch which had the fuzzy hair so yeah they put out some of these guys this is the land adventurer they also did the sea adventurer and i think the air adventurer or whatever anyway they just used this head again and they put it on a suited body um which was the suited body that destro uh had for the rise of cobra movie so yeah, it was kind of a cool figure, but it, again, it was expensive to get. You could only get that version of Joe Colton with two 12-inch dolls. So you got two big 12-inch Joes plus this guy in the suit. And yeah, even though I would have liked to have a version of G.I. Joe in the suit, it wasn't worth it to me to go buy two 12-inch figures, which I don't collect. So there you go. So next up, there was a two-pack called the Rescue Ops, which uh, had new versions of Clutch and Ice Storm. And I'll be honest, the Clutch was a really nice figure. It had this same head, um, but he had an all-new body made up of newer parts. It was armored, uh, kind of wearing this gray uniform. It was a totally new look for Clutch, and I thought it looked really cool. Um, however, the Ice Storm, like this figure was just released uh, that same year for the very first time. This is not a vintage character that anybody knows 
or anybody has a whole lot of attachment to. It's a nice figure, but the convention one was, I think, pretty much identical to this. Maybe just some slight color changes. So the fact that on eBay you had to buy the two of them together, you know, I really didn't feel like paying money for a new version of this guy. And the clutch, as nice as he was, um, I do have another version of clutch, and this one is more true to his, you know, his more well-known look. So yeah, I didn't pull the trigger on those ones either. However, uh, if I ever found them for sale individually at a good price, I would definitely scoop up the clutch. Another figure they had at the convention was another version of Steel Brigade Delta. Um, this guy is also a Steel Brigade Delta. Um, you'll see his stand says Destro, but that's just because I had an extra, an extra Destro stand laying around, and this guy didn't come with one. Um, so yeah, this I can't even remember where this figure came. I think he came with a vehicle of some sort. It's kind of a weird look for a Steel Brigade brigade but that's what they call them um yeah so i prefer the more classic steel brigade look right here so yeah this steel steel brigade delta didn't do much for me and then they had a new version of steel brigade delta at the con and it came with a new a repaint of the skyhawk vehicle so since he came with a vehicle again it was quite expensive to buy and i don't necessarily love this look of steel brigade as well so I chose to pass on that as well. But if you're a big Steel Brigade Delta fan, you can get a different version of this guy with a Skyhawk. And the last convention exclusive that they had in 2014 was a three pack of Steel Brigade Zombies. So, you know, since the uh, Steel Brigade Commander was part of the box set, um, in, the, uh, in the accompanying comic book, you know, he was leading his forces, a whole bunch of Steel Brigade troopers. And unfortunately, some of them got exposed to Compound Z, and they were turned into zombies. So you get a three-pack of this, basically this figure, but kind of like what they did with the Toxo Viper. They just changed up, you know, gave him one torn sleeve and one exposed foot. And they took uh, this helmet, which, you know, on these figures is a removable helmet, and you've got the beachhead underneath. But they, they sculpted a new head, which was basically this helmet, which was all battle-damaged. Um... And, or you know what, I might even be, I might even be wrong about that. I think what they actually had was they had a beach head head that was kind of all zombified. And then they had a removable helmet still, but the helmet was all battle damaged. Yeah, that's what they did. So that was pretty cool. Um, and I would have liked one of the, those. And actually, as I'm, as I'm saying this, I'm kind of surprised I haven't pulled the trigger and bought at least one of them. Because there's always somebody that breaks up those three packs and sells them individually. You'd probably end up paying you know, 75, 80 bucks or whatever for one of these figures. But uh, yeah, I'll probably end up doing that eventually because I don't need three of them, but to have one zombified Steel Brigade is pretty cool. So there you go. That was my review of the 2014 G.I. Joe Convention box set, Zombie Initiative. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them below. Also, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this. And uh, I do eventually plan to get through all of the convention sets. Um, but if there's anything that you want to see, um, let me know. I'm not really doing them in any particular order. So if there's one that you want to see next, yeah, I'll tackle that. So as always, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.